Preston Physics Grade 11 Kinematics Note 13 Projectile Motion For the projectile motion questions that we're going to look at this year, we always have to hold two assumptions true. The first being that gravity always acts in a downward direction. The second assumption is that we have to totally disregard air resistance. We're going to act as though there's no air resistance at all when we're dealing with these types of questions. Now, when we look at projectile motion, we can always see that a projectile will then fly in the path of a parabola because it's not going to slow down or speed up in the x direction and it only has gravity acting on it in the y direction. If we were to analyze the velocities of the flight of an object in projectile motion, we would see that it starts at some angle to the ground and is continuously changing. The first thing we have to look at though is we always have constant velocity in the x direction. The velocities are always going to be the same magnitude and they're always going to be in the same direction as shown in the diagram. Now when we look at the y direction, we have a constant acceleration in the y direction, meaning that the acceleration due to gravity is constantly acting on the object. So we start with our velocity going up, and as we get closer to the top, we get shorter and shorter. Then as we go back down, it starts to get longer again. To get our overall velocity, we have to add the two colored vectors together. In this case, our overall velocity is the color brown. When we look at this, the overall velocity always takes the shape of a parabola. We have the tangents to the parabola would be our velocity vectors in this case. We are now going to look at an example that's not on your sheet. So turn your sheet over and copy it down or try to get the main points of this example. What we're looking at is a golf ball that's being hit at an angle of 32 degrees above the horizontal, meaning above the horizon line. We have an initial velocity at that 32 degrees of 40 meters per second. The question we're looking to answer is how far away will the ball land from the golfer? For a question like this, we're going to draw a diagram and label as many things as we can. So we put our initial velocity, which is at an angle of 32 degrees, and it's going 40 meters per second. We know that there's an x and a y component to this velocity. In order to find the distance that the ball has traveled, this is a very important thing. We need to examine both the x components and the y components of this motion. So when we're looking at this, we have an initial velocity in the x direction and in the y direction. To find the x direction, we have the cosine because we have the adjacent side. So the x velocity is 40 cos 32, and then with that being said, the y velocity would then be 40 sine 32 degrees. Now that we've broken this up into x and y, it's always the most important thing is to find the time first in a projectile motion question. We use the y component to find the time. Because we can add an acceleration, we have our initial velocity, and we know what our final velocity is actually going to be equal to as well because this is a parabola. So when we solve our initial velocity, we find that it's 21.1 meters per second. Our final velocity is 21.2 meters per second. We're trying to find our time. Now we make our up positive and our down negative. So our acceleration is negative. Our initial velocity is positive, And our final velocity then becomes negative. We're going to use the formula A equals V2 minus V1 over T, sub in all of our values, and we notice that we have negative 21.2 minus 21.2 over T. When we rearrange for T, we find 4.3 seconds. This makes our final calculation actually very easy. Knowing that the time is 4.3 seconds, and in the x direction we have no acceleration, we can use the formula v equals d over t to solve for d, which would be the total distance the ball has traveled on this flight. 
when we're subbing in everything, we have to remember that our x velocity is not the same as our y velocity was. So do not use the same value. In this case, we end up with 33.9 meters per second. We have 4.3 seconds, and we have d as our question mark. So we use v equals d over t. We rearrange. We sub our numbers in. And again, our units are already in our given and required, so we don't need to include them. And we find that our final distance is 145.8 meters. So therefore, the ball has traveled 145.8 meters before it landed. The questions associated with this note are numbers 47 to 55 in your yellow duotangs. Again, take your time with these questions, make sure you've set them up correctly, and make sure you're using the appropriate formulas to solve for what the questions ask for. It's important to always solve for time first using the Y component.